And I'm Mike. And here are this week's top stories. This Friday is the last day to order school yearbooks. They're $75 and you should pay in the main office. I recommend you get one, you know, just in case Facebook is down and you need to stalk someone. Yeah, or, you know, to share your memories with your grandchildren one day. Also, if you're a part of a club, talk to the leaders and see when you will take your club photos. They need to be submitted by December 1st. Be on the lookout for people shoving papers in your face next Friday, November 6th, since it's West Side Stories Publication Day. West High Show Choirs are holding their annual Works in Progress performance with City High Show Choirs in the auditorium next week, November 4th. The BPA kids went to the BPA Fall Leadership Conference in Des Moines this past Sunday and Monday. There, they did lots of fun stuff like mini breakout sessions with businesses in the area. That's a great way to kick off the year for BPA. Keep an eye out on those BPA kids. They might be affiliated with some of the top businesses in our community in a few years. For example, I hope Ashlyn Dale runs a Poncheros one day so she can give me free beans. Dance Marathon's 100 Days Out was last Saturday. They were raising awareness for their big six-hour event this January to help fight childhood cancer. There there were speakers talking about their experiences and many West High students who danced for hours. And cut their hair. FTK. Hey Leela, do you know the name of the theorem that was mysteriously proposed in 1637 but remained unsolved because the writer couldn't fit his ideas? Oh God, no, on please, the page Barbara, and... no, please, just stop. I, I, ooh. Let me finish the question before buzzing in. Minus 50 points. The theorem that was proposed in 1637 that was proven 200 years later by Andrew Wiles. Well, these kids did. Last Thursday, West Side took some mathletes to Mount Mercy University for a math competition. They did a story problem or a modeling test, a test of math speed, and a test of accuracy. Then the top five teams competed in a Jeopardy round, and then a hot dog eating contest, and then a three-legged race that followed the path of like the cosine graph, and it was just really mathematical uh, and very cool. No, but West High did place first, second, third, and fourth. We asked Max Hill what it was like before the competition. We're going to win, and we're going to beat everyone, and then I'm going to go home and Mom will be proud of me for once. But after the speed and accuracy rounds, this competitor said he was less confident. Colonel, how did you think you did on this team round? Uh, the team round was probably the hardest out of the uh, three, but uh, out of the rounds that we had today, so we didn't do that well, but I think overall we probably still did pretty well. What are West's goals at this competition? Well. Hopefully we'll sweep all the top spots. All four of our teams will come in the top four. So. With a varsity and JV victory on the third at Jefferson, the math team is looking forward to a strong season of Vermont's Last Theorem! Right, you definitely knew that. Yeah, I did. Yeah, I did. <laughs> hey Barbara, what do you get when you put donkeys and elephants in the same room? Oh, you're talking about the debate last Wednesday between the Republican and Democrat club over gun control, right? No. No, Barbara, I was referring to a zoo. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. But that, that sounds like fun. How'd that go? Well, it got pretty heated at times, and though there were no clear winner, both sides made some strong arguments. Lynn Chocolate Cafe. That's not what I'm talking about. Okay, you find what you're talking about. Oh, it's right? <laughs> Also heated, food. Mmm, delicious food. Sykes' 10th annual diversity dinner last Thursday really nailed it. Tamales, spaghetti, fried chicken. There were also performances from members of Psych and others in the West community ranging from piano and singing to poetry readings. All which celebrated the diversity at West. Student Senate has organized a fall fun fair after school in the courtyard this Friday. Admission is free and there'll be food free food, of course. Wear your costumes because there will be a contest for funniest, most creative, and best group. Winners get Ponchero's gift cards. There will be cornhole, which is probably the most Iowan thing that I've ever, I've ever heard of, um, cakewalk, pumpkin bowling, and face painting. Wow, what a variety. And just in case the free food and fun activities didn't bribe you, yearbook will also be taking pictures, so maybe your face will be a little more present in that giant $75 book that you have to order by tomorrow. Wow, we really made it full circle. And we mentioned Pancheros twice, so. Okay, now to Carter's Corner for sports. Hey guys, this is Aaron Carter with this week's edition of Carter's Corner. The varsity football team lost their final regular season game to Pleasant Valley this past Friday with a score of 35-20. to 20. 
This did not, however, affect their playoff chances as they will play in the first round of the playoffs on Wednesday here at West High against Cedar Rapids Prairie. The volleyball team will play in the MVC Conference Tournament against City High here at West in hopes for qualifying for the state tournament. West beat City earlier in the year in a close five-set match. Both the boys and the girls cross-country teams qualified for state in districts this weekend. The boys team placed third and the girls team placed second in qualifying respectively. Senior Patrick Karanja was the top runner for the boys as he placed fourth and sophomore Bailey Nock was the top runner for the girls as she placed third. The state meet will be held this Saturday here in Fort Dodge, Iowa. The girls swim team will try to qualify for state as well this Saturday when they swim in the regional meet um, on Saturday. Thank you, this is Aaron Carter and back to you guys in the studio. That's it for this week. Thanks for tuning in. This has been the West High Weekly.